Our guest in this segment is Magistrate Daryl Scholl. Good morning, Daryl. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Good morning. Great to have you with us, uh, sir. Are, where are you uh, specifically as we speak right now? Well, I, we, I've taken uh, a, a short trip uh, with my wife down to the beach uh, uh, for a day of relaxation. Oh, very nice. I hope the weather cooperates for you. It's beautiful so far. Hey, let's talk about the uh, the jail system in the local area, Daryl, as you deal with it on a regular basis. And you can give us an update from what you understand. Have there been any improvements made as the situation is described in the past with Eastern Regional Jail have been quite bleak? Well, let me, let me take you back a couple of years. Uh, it was about two years ago uh, that some of my fellow magistrates and I started raising the issue uh, on the conditions in Eastern Regional Jail two years ago. Uh, of course, we were uh, the jail was dealing with uh, covid uh, the, the short staffing, which has plagued them for, for quite a while. Uh, but the conditions two years ago were, were simply abysmal at the jail. There was uh, not enough staff to clear rotting food out of some of the cell areas, uh, uh, severely understaffed. Employees were working 18, 20-hour shifts day after day and, and, and getting exhausted. The morale was, was very low. Uh, the jail was uh, over capacity. There were uh, uh, detainees sleeping in the gym uh, because there weren't cells for them. It was it was very very bad conditions. Uh, so we started raising the issue in press issue, uh, press interviews. Uh, got the chief justice of the Supreme Court in for a tour. Uh, brought in some local legislators. Brought in the governor's office, uh, and and started to see some improvements. In our role as magistrates, we're at the jail every day. Uh, I'm there very frequently, morning and evening, uh, and and have seen improvements with some of the actions the legislature has taken. Uh, the Department of Corrections has uh, done a very good job recently of moving uh, prison detainees out of the regional jail and back into the correctional centers where they belong. Jail population has gone down quite a bit, uh, and and the correctional officers, uh, from what I can tell, are seeing some light at the end of the tunnel as far as uh, addressing the, the pay issues, the staffing issues, uh, and they're starting to bring some additional staff on. So things <clears throat> things are improving. We've got a long way to go, but things are improving. Well, Daryl, uh, you mentioned a couple of things, uh, the staffing. Uh, also, you mentioned that the population is going down. Uh, are these related? Uh, I would not think they would be, but you kind of implied they were related. No, it's uh, they're both conditions which which lead to better uh, a better situation at the jail. Uh, population has gone down for a number of reasons. Uh, when uh, defendants are are sentenced in a felony matter uh, to a, a prison term, uh, they, they need to be uh, transferred to the Department of Corrections facilities, the prisons in our state, not the regional jails. During COVID, uh, that wasn't happening, uh, so the populations. Uh, swelled uh, at regional jails because they were housing people that should have been at other facilities. That's been uh, addressed. The uh, uh, Especially in Berkeley County, we have so many resources for pre-sentencing now uh, that we're able to uh, release uh, uh, some potential jail inmates uh, on personal recognizance with the conditions that they <clears throat> report to the day report center, uh, enroll in, uh, community alternatives to violence classes and other uh, other ways to, to keep them out of jail before trial. That's been a very successful program. So that's reduced it. Uh, the magistrates have taken a real effort to uh, uh, not jail people that that shouldn't be there. You know, first first offense, minor offenses uh, don't need to be in jail pre-trial if they're not a flight risk. Uh, the legislature has addressed it with some uh, some uh, legislation to. Uh, prevent people from being uh, put in jail pre, uh, pre-trial. So all of those factors have combined to reduce the population. Uh, I checked yesterday with the jail. Their, their current population is 434 inmates. Uh, at the height of this problem, they were well over 650 uh, two years ago. So you know, they've reduced it by a third. They have some excess capacity now, a little bit of breathing room. What is the official, uh, what, what is the official capacity of that facility? Uh, there's varying numbers. There's uh, it, it's it's north of 600. 
Okay. Uh, but there are some emergency conditions where they can increase that even more. So I don't know what the exact number is. It's around 620 or so is the, okay. uh, is the operating capacity of the jail, I believe. Thank you. How many counties uh, send inmates to the regional jail, Eastern, Re- Eastern our, Region? Our, our regional jail serves just three counties, Morgan, Jefferson, and Berkeley. Uh, there are some that, that serve eight or nine or ten counties. Uh, so uh, we have a... Uh, a, a lower uh, number of inmates coming in and out of the jail uh, uh, here. Uh, we're really blessed with a fantastic uh, facility uh, and a good staff, good superintendent. Uh, it's a very efficiently run jail currently. You say it's good superintendent. Uh, in years past, there's been such a turnover of superintendents. In fact, two or three a year or, uh, when I was more closely involved with it. Has that stabilized? It has. We've had the same superintendent there now for about about two years. Uh, he's it's a, a veteran of the uh, of the prison system, the jail system. Uh, has the respect, I think, of the officers. Certainly has the respect of the magistrates. Uh, it's done a good job of reaching out to us on how we can work together to make certain the people that we are sending there are being well treated while, while awaiting trial, uh, but also that we are. Um, addressing any other issues that come up. There's good communication. Uh, for every prisoner, uh, the county pays, I think, around $4,748 uh, $47, per day. Does that, co- is, does that cover the full cost of the jail? I don't believe it does. I don't know the specific numbers because we don't get that much into it, but uh, it's not an inexpensive thing to run. I hear, uh, I, I hear from some elected officials uh, and others uh, that we're sending too many people to the jail and it's too expensive for the counties. I, I'm tempted when I hear those things to bring a list of people that I've sent to jail pretrial and said, which ones do you want to release? Uh, there are some uh, some crimes that are committed in our community that, that are just, uh, it's too dangerous to allow people to be uh, on release uh, without severe security um, uh, prior, to, prior to trial. It's too much risk to the public, uh, and we're not going to do that. So I... I think that I think that the magistrates, at least in our county, are doing a very good job of, of uh, selectively uh, sending to jail those people that need to go to jail uh, before and after adjudication, uh, and and uh, we're not we're not sending grandma who uh, had a tail light out and when she was pulled over didn't have her registration with her. Uh, it's it's a, a very selective list that are going in, and they they need to be there. For, uh, public safety of the public. Um, the the uh, uh, the next regional jail over. Uh, where is that, Daryl? The, the next one oh, to the I, west. Uh, there, there's one in Northern Highlands or in the Highlands. Um, and where is that? There's. Oh, I I don't know specifically where it is, John. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, would it would yeah. it serve like the western five counties? Uh, uh, the 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 rest of the counties that in Charleston are considered uh, part of the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, it, it would, and, and it's a very, very busy facility as well. Okay. Uh, I, I believe there there are seven or eight throughout the state. Of course, we focus on uh, on Eastern Regional Jail is is uh, where we do all of our business. Are okay. you seeing? Thank- I'm sorry. Excuse me, John. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, are you seeing a trend in the type of crimes in our community, uh, Daryl? Uh, uh, I'm happy to report that at least in my court, I'm seeing a reduction. A slight reduction in drug-related crimes, uh, and and that is a, a wonderful trend to start to see after after the years of, of the scourge of drugs in our community, uh, the hard work of, of our sheriffs, uh, of, of law enforcement uh, throughout the area, the cooperation, uh, we're starting to see an improvement in that. And the treatment options that are offered by the county, uh, with today's economy. I'm starting to see a, an uptick in civil cases related to people not being able to pay their bills or pay their rent. Those cases are increasing. Uh, and, and sadly, and I hope it's, it's just a blip, uh, not, not a trend, but sadly, uh, starting to see an, a slight increase in the number of, of serious crimes, sexual and physical abuse by a parent or a, a person in custody of a child. Very, very sad cases. By the way, I got a text from uh, Chris Strovel, who says that Potomac Highlands Regional Jail on 50 east of Romney would be the next closest of the regional jail. Always count on Chris to, to have the important information. <laughs> yes. So thank thank you. you. And and maybe Chris can tell us exactly how many counties it serves. 
<laughs> well, let's put him back to work. By the way, yeah. also, uh, Bill from Senator Jason Barrett, $54.48 is the full rate for each prisoner. The first 80% of each county's pro rata share of nights receive a 20% discount. I, I think that's in the new legislation. Okay. And I and the, other, the question related to that is do these costs that the county pay, does that cover the full cost of the county, uh, or full cost of jail, or does the state add a supplemental cost to defray the rest to defray the balance i'll send that question off to senator barrett hey jason's <laughs> always ready uh, uh daryl we have a lot of growth in the county which everybody's fully aware of uh have you seen a correlation with a uh, uptick in crime as far relative to our growth uh it, we have and, and I, I do have some specific uh figures uh, at hand on that so we've looked at uh, data in, in various types of, of filings, misdemeanors, uh, domestic violence, felony filings, civil filings. Uh, over the last four years, our number of misdemeanor, fi- misdemeanor filings uh, in Berkeley County Magistrate Court have increased 39%. Uh, domestic violence, uh, emergency protective order filings up 31%, felonies up 26%, uh, civil filings up by, by 17%. Uh, it's much of that is related to growth in the county, but it's also related to our geographic location. We have a lot of uh, criminal filings for people that don't live here but pass through this area. Uh, so it's a very busy court um, to, to kind of put that uh, in, into uh, perspective. Uh, each magistrate in Berkeley County, even with the addition of the magistrate on our next election cycle, each magistrate is going to, to uh, be handling approximately 1,900 cases per year. That's the highest caseload in the state, uh, more than double uh, the, uh, the median uh, on that. The median's around 900 uh, and uh, is uh, drastically more than some of the larger counties uh, in, the, in the state. For example, Kanawha County handles about 1,200 per magistrate. We're at 1,900. Uh, so our, our growth, which is projected to continue for uh, years to come, uh, it is a, a factor in the added resources that are needed to address the criminal justice needs of our area. And so, to answer your last question, too, by the way, John, five yeah. counties, they are the Region 8 counties. So That's five in that system. That would be Hampshire, Hardy, Mineral, Grant, uh, and Pendleton. That's from Mr. Strobel once yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, Daryl, the new magistrate will come on board when? When we'll be actually expecting to walk through, he or she walk through the doors. Our seventh magistrate will be elected in the 2024 May primary and will take office on January 1st of 2025. So we're a year and three or four months away. So. We are. We're, we're operating at a deficit of magistrates and staff right now for, for the caseload we have. Uh, but I also think we're one of the most efficient court systems in the, in the state. Uh, and, and so we're able to, we're able to function, uh, but, we, but it's at the straining point. Yeah, even with additional magistrate, looking at the numbers you provided us, you you folks will still be overworked relative to the other parts of the state. Is that fair to say? I, I think that's fair to say. And and with growth, uh, you know, the the deficit of of uh, resources, uh, the, the spread between the def- what we have and what is needed will just continue to grow. Uh, but we'll make it work. It's it's a tough job. Yeah. The courthouse has been uh, screened uh, close to capacity anyway uh, with additional magistrate and if we have additional circuits down the line. Uh, how much of an impact are you seeing with the limitation of the courthouse space uh, on you and your fellow magistrates? Well, it's, uh, you know, we have a need for, for more courtrooms and, and more courthouse space. Uh, we have ways of working around that in the short term. We're not going to have additional courtrooms or office space prior to that new magistrate coming on board in 2025, but we can find find room for them. We might have to start putting bunk desks in in the offices to, to have enough room, but we'll, we'll find room for them. Uh, but uh, long-term, there is a need for additional facilities for our courts. Where does I one... We'll build, oh, go ahead. Daryl, where does one buy a bunk desk? <laughs> at, at the All Night Bunk Desk. The All Night Bunk Desk store? <laughs> <laughs> Daryl Parton. Bunk Desk Discounters. <laughs> yes, of course, right down the street. Yeah. Uh, I, they should start advertising with you, Rob. I, I think you're right. I agree. <laughs> uh, Daryl, uh, going back to the cost of the jail, uh, what has been done to try to reduce the cost of uh, the housing cost of the, of the jails? 
Well, I, I, I know that the jail has taken steps themselves, but you know, the first part of that bill is to uh, reduce the number of people that are, are going to the jail. That um, Statewide, uh, there's approximately 11,000 uh, detainees who spend less than 24 hours at the jail. Uh, they, they make bail quickly, um, so they, and there are several situations which might cause that. Uh, if law enforcement encounters a person who is drunk and disorderly, obviously intoxicated at 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, there's nobody to pick them up and, and take them home or take care of them. Uh, the law enforcement really has no choice except to place them in jail overnight. Uh, uh, similar with with other arrests where somebody might have received a PR bond if they were arrested between 8 and 5 during the day. Uh, they go to jail uh, and they're released the next morning when the magistrate sees them. Uh, but there's been a lot of steps taken to reduce um, those incidents uh, and, and reduce the number of people that are going to jail and, and, and causing costs. And, and, you know, the first night, I have to imagine, is more expensive for the jail to administer than the second night. They have intake. They have all those other uh, uh, procedures they have to follow when somebody comes in uh, and when they're released. Uh, so we're taking a lot of steps, and there's a lot more being done uh, to reduce the number of less than 24-hour stays. Is there a way of not checking them into the ERJ for an overnight stay uh, in a situation you describe, uh, Daryl? Yeah. Is there a, like a, a holding cell situation that you could encounter with something that wouldn't involve the ERJ? As you know, it's uh, our, our, the goal of law enforcement professionals to, to keep uh, troopers and deputies and officers on the road as much as possible. Uh, and if, if somebody's being held at, say, city police in Martinsburg in a holding cell, there has to be a sworn officer uh, observing them at all times for the for the detainee's safety. Uh, so there are ways of doing that, but it means keeping an officer off the street for a very long time. Daryl, how does community service play into this equation? So community service is uh, usually a post-adjudication uh, sentence that we can impose or a condition of a deferred adjudication. So, uh, of course, the jail population, there's there's basically three parts to it. It's uh, people that are in jail waiting to post bond uh, before their trial or before their hearings. Uh, there's people that have been sentenced to a term of less than a year for a misdemeanor offense uh, that are serving their time. And then there are felon inmates that are being transferred to Department of Corrections. Um, community service is a way to address uh, those folks that have had their, their first hearings, uh, and it can be offered as a, a, an alternative sentence, uh, as well as home confinement. And we're doing a lot more home confinement work, and our home confinement office in the county is working very hard and, and with an increasing caseload. Um, we can, uh, we're, magistrates are doing more uh, release on PR with the condition of GPS monitoring, uh, geofencing if, if uh, it's a crime of violence, uh, and we need to make certain that an inmate, or excuse me, a, a defendant uh, is not having contact or coming near uh, uh, the victim of their crime. Uh, we can do uh, GPS monitoring, geofence them uh, through home confinement uh, officers, uh, and if they violate that, they can be returned to jail. So it's a way to keep them out of jail, uh, address the need of public safety, uh, and, and attempt to, to keep the cost to the taxpayers as reasonable as possible. Magistrate Daryl Scholl, our guest here on the program. I want to follow up on a few things from Senator Jason Barrett as well while we have Daryl with us as well. Uh, from 80 to 100 percent of pro rata sheriff nights, the rate is $54.48. Once you go above 100 percent, there's a 20 percent penalty. Your response, the response to your question, Bill, does the 5448 cover 100 percent of the expenses? The rate is paid by county to corrections. Corrections uses that for expenses in $54.48 is the rate determined to be the total cost. So that's the full exposure to the county. Now, that the would be a statewide average, though, right, I think? Correct. Yeah. And uh, from John Hardy, uh, John Hardy, uh, the, as in delegate, as in vice chair of finance, I will be introducing legislation for a one-time appropriation of $30 million for courthouse improvement fund. This will be used for counties that have uh, added additional circuit and magistrate courts 
It's an opportunity for a matching fund for counties. Yeah. Uh, Jefferson also picked up an additional magistrate this time. Went from three to four. So that is going to considerably reduce the caseload per magistrate in, in Jefferson. Yeah, okay, yeah. But looking at the numbers Daryl gave us, 1,900 yeah. per magistrate compared to the state average of 900. Oh, yeah. So even Oh, more- Berkeley should have gotten at yeah. least one more. Exactly. Oh, absolutely yeah. it should have. Yeah, is that is that still uh, uh, some consideration given by the Supreme Court to give Ber- Berkeley an additional magistrate, Daryl? So the uh, legislation which authorized the Supreme Court to make recommendations uh, in, the, in the previous session for additional magistrates uh, was renewed with some slight changes. Uh, our next opportunity uh, for an additional magistrate from current legislation would be after a 2026 uh, study and action by the legislature. So 2025, 2026. So an additional person could take office January of 2027 uh, if the legislature and the, and the Supreme Court agree on that, uh, unless there's some extra activity that, that isn't currently planned uh, to address it in the short term. I, I'll tell you, uh, I, I think currently we can make things work with the number of magistrates we have. It's it's the support staff that's necessary, clerks, uh, magistrate clerks, uh, assistants, uh, that handle uh, the paperwork. You know, with 1,900 cases a year, uh, each case is, for me, is generating about 10 pieces of, of paper I have to deal with, uh, which is a lot of paper for a magistrate, but our assistants are, are dealing with that uh, three, fourfold over what we do. And, and uh, they're doing scheduling, uh, answering public's questions. Uh, I have to tell you that our, our telephone response time for people calling in on citations or questions is nowhere near where I'd like it to be. Uh, but uh, we simply don't have enough support staff uh, to be able to address that currently. Is that one minute left, Bill? Is that determined by the Supreme Court? Uh, legislature uh, authorized in, in this previous session uh, additional staffing uh, where necessary. Uh, we have a, a request before the Supreme Court right now uh, to be able to address that. It doesn't take legislative action at this point. One quick question, Daryl. This is a tough job. Uh, we all recognize that. Will you be running for re-election? Well, I'll tell you, the emotional high for me from making the intro last year after an appearance on the radio show. <laughs> hey, uh, you, it, you and many it, others. It's, it's starting to wear off. Uh, so uh, I, I want the opportunity to continue to, to do this job so I might be able to make the intro at some point in the future. It's a great job. It's a lot of hard work. I really enjoy it, and I, I do intend to run for, for re-election. Thank you, Bill. M- making the intro is kind of like winning the masters that you get the green jacket that's kind of like what making the intro is in in this area it's almost like you know, getting the green jacket groceries though i i tell the grocery store clerk i made the intro and and he or she just doesn't care <laughs> <laughs> sadly there are those who don't enjoy golf and don't care about the green jacket what can i tell you, you? all don't give green jackets away here rob we're thinking about it. It's in a budget request I have uh, for Mr. Hornby as part of the big omnibus package. No. Yeah. Yeah. John, I'll tell you, though, the bill's willing to give away some yellow jackets if you're happy. Apparently he is, yeah. <laughs> Daryl Scholl, thank you so much. We appreciate your time this morning, sir. Have fun on the beach, Daryl. 